Persona 3 is an incredibly strange game when you actually think about it real hard for a second. It is an aesthetical anomaly among the sea of other Japanese JRPGs that came out during that time. The reason for that being its heavy use of Greek mythology in its aesthetic and its themes and world building. Now this is something that's not that unusual in a lot of western media, but for Japanese media I think it's very strange and fascinating even. It essentially takes the mysticism and life lessons and cultural ideals of another society and bakes it into a uniquely Japanese media for a completely atypical buffet of fantastical mystery and chaotic fantasy. And I definitely think that that is a huge part of why this game was selling and doing gangbusters when it really first came out in the mid 2000s because there really wasn't a lot on the market that was exactly like it and fucking smacked you in the face with the fucking nail bat metal bat of themes and symbolism. All of this while being stirred in a stew of Jungian psychology. And that's what we're here to talk about today. The application of that Jungian psychology and Greek mythology at the same time with the main protagonist's persona, Orpheus. First, let's establish what exactly a persona is. A persona is essentially a supernatural entity that is summoned by the main protagonist and his friends throughout the course of the main Persona 3 story and used to combat the shadows. Now, these two things are actually concepts that come from Jungian psychology, where Carl Jung states that a persona is essentially the masked or the front-facing personality that a person displays to the outside world, where the shadow is all of the rejected aspects of their personality, essentially pushed off to the corner of their psyche. These personas in the context of the game often represent key personality traits and aspects of how a character views themselves and how they view the world as a person. So with that in mind, Orpheus, the very first persona that the protagonist of Persona 3 unlocks, is essentially a reflection of the protagonist's love of music and the musical theme of Persona 3. Persona 3 is perhaps one of the most musically intensive Persona games in terms of its thematic use of music, the um, mp3 player that the protagonist has, and how important music is to setting the tone and mood of various scenes and events throughout the entirety of the game. It really took a step up from Persona 1 and 2 in my opinion. And even more than that, we can look at Orpheus as a sort of meta assessment of what the main protagonist is supposed to be, not necessarily even just how he sees himself. Now an interesting aspect of the Orpheus mythos in Greek mythology is that Orpheus's music is so supernaturally splendid that he is able to charm all living creatures including those unliving like the dead. He is essentially of the charmer archetype and that is a central part of Persona 3 in the sense that you are making and forming bonds with other people throughout the course of Persona 3 and wooing the hearts of men and women alike. Orpheus is essentially the ultimate fuckboy musician persona. Another aspect that I think is centrally important to the use of Orpheus as a persona is the legend of Orpheus and his wife Eurydice. So in the mythology of Orpheus, his wife Eurydice perishes and goes to Hades, the underworld. And Orpheus could not fucking accept that. So he travels to the underworld in an attempt to retrieve her soul and bring her back from the dead. During his time there, his music was just so godlike and so amazing that he essentially warms the hearts of all the denizens of the underworld, including Hades himself, and Hades allows him the opportunity to actually take Eurydice back with him, but with the stipulation that Orpheus cannot look back at her during the entire time that he is taking her to the surface. Orpheus does make it back 
to the surface from the underworld but however he looks at her just before he makes it and ends up losing her anyway the significance of this however is that orpheus is one of the few greek heroes who made it back from the underworld now why does this matter for persona 3 because tartarus as you may know as the main dungeon from persona 3 is based on the greek mythological counterpart that acts as a prison within the underworld and the fact that you as the main protagonist are granted the role of leader of your party essentially you are leading your companions your party members through the underworld and back and and they are trusting you not to doubt yourself and to lead them to safety so that they can survive their trek through Tartarus. Now, as far as the story of Orpheus is concerned, another central and fascinating part of Orpheus's story is the mourning aspect. His mourning for Eurydice is a central aspect of Orpheus as a mythological figure. And when you compare that to Persona 3, Persona 3 has a heavy influence and inspiration in thematically with the concept of death and mourning and this becomes more and more apparent as you play the game and even rears its head very early on in the subsequent idea of the story with how orpheus when first summoned bursts apart and reveals thanatos thanatos for those of you familiar with greek mythology you may know that he is the god of death not the same way that hades is the ruler of the underworld but more so thanatos represents the very concept of death primordially a sort of grim reaper of Greek mythology. It is a peek into the true power of the main protagonist and his ability to wield the very concept of death to smite his enemies, which I think is metal as fuck and shows that they put a lot of thought into how they were gonna utilize Greek mythology into really spicing up their game and making it interesting for the viewing audience. And I would also like to add that I think that this is also a very important part of why I think a lot of people, particularly Westerners, could resonate with the game is that it takes these like western mythological ideas and it almost sort of bridges the gap between like say Japanese society and the Japanese thematic ideas with a western audience by using these Greek mythological perspectives. But that's just my theory. Anyway, if you like this video and I fucking charmed you like the mighty Greek hero Orpheus with my my musical and lyrical voice then i will implore you to smash that like button subscribe comment and uh engage with my content this is only part one of what i think will be a video series so i hope to catch you in part two coming whenever i actually make it <laughs> thank you for watching once again and i will see you next time